Um, well, thank you for the invitation to, to take part in this session. I think we're going to have a, a casual discussion about um, adapting from page to stage, and then in the second part, the stage, uh, page to screen. Um, uh, I'm delighted to be here from Wales, the guest country this year, uh, and I thanks for the invitation. Um, the adaptation from um, the writing plays in Wales is, uh, uh, is uh, we have a long history of um, playwrights um, in our country, ranging from Saunders Lewis um, and other writers up to the present. Um, and I've been fortunate to work on many projects um, in this area, particularly with the National Theatre of Wales, the um, Llwyfan Cymru that are based in Carmarthen. Um, we have um, a, a rich culture of, of um, producing work that's, um, uh, that is at once um, uh, herriol, we call in Welsh, which is um, uh, challenging works, and also a rich tradition of traditional um, works by, by um, classic um, writers as well. Um, I've, my, my first uh, uh, the play I want to talk about today, perhaps, was called An Agessive, and um, it was a play about a girl who, um, who heard voices, and it came by because of my experiences as a writer, in that we shut ourselves in rooms, I don't know if you do the same, and listen to the voices that speak to us. Um, so I used that as, a, as the essential premise of a play about a young girl in the 1950s in rural Wales who um, uh, said that she heard voices. Um, and this um, was a great experience because it allowed us to um, uh, play with the idea of hearing voices of um, creative energy and the stigma of mental health issues as well. Um, and what was interesting about it is we have two languages in Wales. The, the Welsh language is the one that I speak, but we also have a high population in Wales that speak the English language as well. So there has been a push recently in Wales to try and draw the English language audience into Welsh productions. And what we did with this play was to trial a new, um, a new device, uh, an app for the phone, that allows us to um, listen to the play in our own language while it's being performed in another language, which is a new innovation that we have in Wales. And I think it's, it's doing pretty well, to be honest. Um, it's uh, providing a new audience for Welsh language plays. I'm not sure if our moderator is... We have another writer or a moderator? As soon as well, as well. <laughs> so we are catching up as well. So um, I, I think these new innovations in Wales are going to provide uh, uh, to, to help the integration between the Welsh language theatre and the English language theatre in Wales. Um, so I'm writing a new play for them at the moment, um, which again uh, draws from the session this morning, the Mabinogi, on the idea of uh, 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 transmutation and moving from one um, sex to another, so it's about a, a, a trans girl who's moving through her journey, which is the, the next direction of the play. Um, and it, it's, it's a difficult one in Wales because the amount of playwrights who write in the Welsh language is perhaps smaller than the English language. So um, we have to make decisions about what we write about and we have to um, sometimes take on things that we wouldn't normally place ourselves in. I mean, I wouldn't want to, say for example, to write the story of somebody whose experience is far removed from my own. But at the same time, if playwrights don't do that in Wales, um, the, we will be behind in discussions about political discussions and um, all, all kinds of social discussions as well. So that's the situation in Wales um, where bringing innovation to our theatre. We're trying to integrate the two theatres in Wales as well. And um, at the moment, it's working quite well. And there is a theatre piece um, tonight, I believe, at 10 o'clock um, called My Body Welsh, which I urge you to go and see. It's being performed here in Kerala. 
Uh, it's a wonderful piece, um, a multidisciplinary piece. And I urge you, if you want to hear more about theatre in Wales, that you, um, you go and see it. I'll pass you over. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, good evening. Actually, the topic for discussion is two-folded. In the first part, we discuss about literature, adaptation of literature to stage. That means theater and literature and theater. And the second part, we will see what is the adaptation of literature to film. That is uh, film and literature. So I think um, the time is too short to go through all the intricacies of the adaptation processes. But still we see what we can do within the short time. Uh, you see, first we have to understand that whether it is literature, stage, that is theater or cinema, they are differently different media. That's the first thing we have to understand. Because many people uh, uh, confuse us with these uh, different forms of expression. But if you understand clearly that Literature is a separate media. It has got its own limitations and explorations and all those things. Similarly, you have got theater. So whatever is in the written words, it may not be possible to transform into theater. Similarly, whatever is in the form of written words, it's very difficult to transform into film. This is the process. This is the problem we encounter when we adapt as a filmmaker or, or when we study about the adaptations because I have done both so I know the intricacies behind the adaptation to uh, screen and also suppose we have a stage play then adapting to film so every time this problem arises so this is the first thing we have to understand each one are different media and it has got the potentialities. Each media has got its own potentialities. Suppose an ad uh, a man who is adapting, or a filmmaker, or a stage director who is adapting the particular literary piece to theater or film. So he has to understand that I am working in a different media. So whatever is there in the literature, you cannot adapt it completely to stage. Because it's a different media. Because the audience, see, as a, uh, when you read a novel or when you read a play in the text, see, you get a lot of images. So the stage director uh, who adapts this particular piece of novel or play, so he is uh, transforming this particular one to another medium. So he should clearly know about the literary medium he is taking and also the, the stage, that is theater, he is working on it. So what, is the pos what are the possibilities of the theater he is working on? That he should understand. So then according to that possibilities, he has to take certain elements from the literary piece and make it suitable for the particular theater audience. Because in theater, you know, the director is not the superstar. Here the actor is the superstar. So you are directly interacting with the audience. The actor is directly interacting with the audience. Of course, there is a director who is behind all these scenes, but he is not coming to the stage. The actor is directly interacting with the uh, audience. So he has to, the, the, who, those, who is, uh, those who adapt uh, from a literature piece or a play, he has to adapt it to the theater principles. So he has to obey all the theater principles, then only he could uh, uh, convey through this particular medium. So this is what I want to say as introduction. Uh, in the next round of talk, we'll talk about adaptation from literature to cinema. Okay, over to you. Um. Broadly, I would like to uh, juxtapose, um, you know, uh, writing which is meant for us to experience in our mind when we read. So it's purely inside our head that's happening. The moment you take it out into three-dimensional space, it's a different kind of experience when you're real and sitting in person and feeling it. And if it is by extension, if it is taken to the screen, you know. 
I would jump the two parts actually, first and second phase. I would just say that there are two kinds of making itself. There is a kind of cinema which is purely to tell a story, which uh, one wouldn't much differentiate from theatre or the theatrical. So there could be cinema which is very theatrical and which is focused on telling of the story where the actor or the performers are predominantly the people who are taking the whole narrative ahead. So that is one kind of making where from the uh, words to uh, the theatricality of screen happens. I'll juxtapose this to another kind of making where <clears throat> what, what the words are on paper are images in your mind, but they get translated into the medium of uh, lens, light, and the other paraphernalia associated with making of images for screen. And it's not necessarily centered around the actor or the telling of a particular story. It could be the way it is being translated by the maker. The maker is bringing in the interpretation with the whole technology and the knowledge and the emotional intelligence of applying so many other paraphernalia things to create a certain experience to you inside a theater. I mean, in, I mean when you watch on the screen. The process is very, very different from um, what's intended to, uh, uh, to be experienced in, in reality, in space, as in a theater. Very different to the images that are on the screen and what you experience in a darkened room, you know, experience to the screen because that's not real and it's a constructed two-dimensional space and um, so much of translation is happening, interpretation is happening by the time that reaches the big screen, you know, on cinema. So, um, what, what, what happens, uh, uh, um, the process in the head is, I feel the, it, it is a, uh, a kind of a translation through technology and emotion bound together, which I don't see a equivalent in any other medium. You know, what happens in cinema? Okay, good evening. Briefly, I'll introduce myself. I'm Arkaitz Cano from the Basque Country. The Basque Country is between Spain and France. Now we are there among, between two very uh, big uh, languages and countries such as Spain and France, French and Spanish. So we have this input from them all the time. But our language has only one million uh, speakers in a sunny day. So we are so small. And smallness could sometimes have some good, has some good things too. As we are not uh, under the pressure of market. What does it mean? That if you are not under the pressure of market, you can, be, you can afford yourself to be more experimental. In the sense that a mainstream writer in my language and a cult writer are pretty much, they both sell pretty much the same. So you have to afford yourself freedom to do whatever you want to do, given that you don't have the pressure of market. Said that, um, uh, about the theme or the topic of this evening. I would say that uh, I have always a, this crisis with genre. I don't know, sometimes I write a poem and suddenly, all of a sudden, I think, okay, I was mistaken. It should be a short story. And sometimes I write a short story and afterwards I, I, I realize that it should be something for a stage. So I'm all the time mixed and in a continuous crisis about genre and about the form of the of my writing that's why I write almost um, everything many many things too many things maybe and when I write uh, lyri lyrics for pop rock bands I feel like I am uh, writing telegrams it's a telegram to someone very few words and that's something I learned from stage, when I started to work for a stage, for on a stage work, I realized that uh, 
the, what uh, Ernest Hemingway used to say, it's absolutely true. He used to say, uh, kill your darlings. Meaning what? Kill your darlings. If you are so proud of some sentence that comes out of your mind and you think it is brilliant and you are so in love with yourself because that, that very phrase is beautiful. Hemingway used to say, okay, erase, delete that phrase. Does the work, does it work, your story, your short story, your drama in the same way? Yes, it does. But in that case, maybe your darling in that case wasn't necessary. So erase that. So after you work uh, for on a stage work, you realize that the weight of the words is huge on a stage. There are some words that are lighter in the paper, but they are very heavy on a stage. So everything changes. I will dare say that writing for a screen or a stage or writing a novel, let's say dialogues. You can, you can be a very good dialogue writer on the page in novels, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a good writer for dialogues on a screen or on a stage. And I would, I would just say even that sometimes there is something opposite, something opposite. The first time I saw uh, a script, that was a cinema script really, but uh, I think as I, I should say that. I thought, okay, it's so easy. So a few words, many ellipses, that's bad writing, I thought myself. So silly I, I was. And after that, I realized that there is a different language, totally different. And I, I would dare to say that sometimes it's opposite. Because you have to build up the character. Uh, a novelist have to, has to build up the character from the beginning to the bitter end entirely. So and the, on, the other, on the other hand, the, the script writer has to do the same, but it's more important in that case, it could be, it's a recipe. The script writer or the, even the stage writer is writing a recipe that somebody else has to do it on a stage. So an ab, ab, eyebrow that is rising or a good su sunset or the thrill of the chase is more important than word itself. And it is uh, understanding that, I, I guess it's very important to, to whoever who wants to, to write on a screen or on a stage work. Um, I think we'll move on from page to, to screen. Is that a good idea? Um, I, I agree with uh, what Arkay just said about uh, writing in a small language giving you expressive freedom because you're not um, tied to markets. And my, my experience has been with, um, again, what you said about adaptation. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a good writer if you can write novels. It doesn't mean you can create a good screenplay. Um, I've adapted several of my novels to film. Um, and it's been a, a, a wonderful and a terrifying experience each time because you have to take the whole thing apart. You have to distance yourself from it, and then you have to recreate that world and those people in a different genre, and you have to use the tools of that particular genre, and you have to kill your darlings. You have to leave a lot of the things that you enjoyed writing in the book or you thought were important in the book. And you have to create new scenes as well. Um, and of course, economics comes into it as well. You know, the director might say, well, we won't set up that scene because it's too expensive. So you know, we'll have to do it this way. So all these thing, things come into it. And it, it's really interesting writing for the screen in Wales at the moment because we have um, a genre called Scandi Noir, I'm, so, I'm sure you've heard of it, the killing, all these um, drama crime series that's, that are coming into Wales at the moment. And Wales has produced some, some quite high profile ones of its own. Um, and the wonderful thing about that is that we can use our culture then to 
to reach a wider audience. Um, as Arkaid said, that the readership can be small or the people who go to theatre in the Welsh language, but um, we have um, series um, at the moment uh, and some films that are going out on iPlayer, some on Netflix that are gaining, uh, the last series I worked on was watched I think over 10 million times on iPlayer, um, which is a huge number for something that has a, a Welsh language content and because we're, we're putting more Welsh language content out there, um, we are upping the percentage of the Welsh in each episode. So there's a, there's a, 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 a great benefit to, to it. But I agree, you need to, to, to reconstruct, to find a new identity for the work and to work within a team. And I think that's another um, difference in that when you write a novel, you are uh, a king or queen of your own world. But of course, when you work on screen or film, you're working within a team and you want other people in that team to use their skills to their best ability and to be able to give them the freedom to do that um, and to pull back your authorship in some way and see this as a new creation, something new that's... ...the kind of tension, right? Um, I would like to make a statement too for uh, comic. That is not in the program, but I'm a comic script writer too. And to me, comic is in a way the perfect cinema because it is cheap. And there is something about cinema and on screen writing that I find desperate. And it is the timing. I have to wait. Oh, sorry. It was. Uh, I, I, I can't write. I can't wait eight, six, ten years. If I have an idea today, if I am lucky, I may have. Uh, I will have the opportunity to see it on a screen year 2028, 20, I don't know. So I don't have that, that time. So I prefer to collaborate and to work with an uh, illustrator or a drawer. And we are only two people. And I can do anything on the comic, which I cannot do on film. So the budget in comic is endless. I mean, if, if I do write uh, air crash, rainy day, okay, let's see. You say so, but the director and the, the, the weather of this day and the budget will decide for you. And in a novel, no, it's a different. So I rather, if I have a good idea, if I think I have a good idea for a film, I rather do a comic book or a graphic novel or even I will write a novel about some, someone who has an idea and wants to write a script, and I will write <laughs> the film inside the novel. Um, to answer the question about uh, being pushed out of your comfort zone, <laughs> I think it's really important because um, it gives you that freshness, it pushes you, and it also helps you fine hone in the skills that you may already have. I think. Hello, hello, hello. I'm particularly aware of um, when I've just written a, 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 a drama for a stage, I'm particularly aware of the sound of words. Coming back to your question, the musicality. Hello? 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 Oh, hang on. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Uh, so I think, uh, you know, the musicality and the sound of things, and Welsh is a particularly musical language, and I particularly, I'm quite fussy sometimes in the theatre, is I may go and just rearrange a sentence or just, just something, and particularly the ends of scenes. I like them to feel like ends of scenes rather than, rather than just a petering out into things. That I, I, you have to write all the way to the end. Uh, and not just give up just at the end. I'm quite fussy about that. I don't know why. And things like symbolism is interesting because I use a lot of symbolism in my um, literature in particular. Things like birds and crows and this kind of thing or 
certain things that I will use. And I found that when adapting things to the stage, the eye gets a lot, uh, the eye is, um, has enough of visual symbols. Whereas if you use a symbol again and again in the body of a text, our subconscious takes it in and we can take it over chapters and chapters and chapters. But once that symbol is made visible, we have to be really careful with it or it over exit and it's obvious what you're trying to do. So the subtlety of symbols, the sounds, things like this uh, are, are good things to keep learning. ഈ സെഷൻ ഇവിടെ അവസാനിക്കുകയാണ്